you take so many losses. You can go out and bomb on any given night. You could be feeling so good about yourself and then you go up and you do the worst set <laughs> and then you feel so terrible afterwards. But that's all part of it. You're constantly looking at moments that make you cringe and things that you said that you just hate yourself for saying. And you go, okay, but now I get to move forward from this. And uh, I don't know if you could tell from the way I'm standing, but I really want to be a comedian. And uh, my parents hate that I'm doing this because they're like, dude, we got you out of Iraq. And you're still bombing. My name is Yasin Mazen Al Haidari. Originally from Iraq, born and raised. I moved to the United States in 2008 and I started doing stand up comedy around 2016. They call me a war survivor. It's kind of weird to hear. I want to talk about the refugees and the refugee experience because that is a huge audience that is unrepresented. He's absolutely hilarious. Make it really loud for Yassine Mazen! I feel like I am standing up for a lot of people. My voice is just enhanced just because I'm representing this group. Give it up for Al Sue, everyone. Jesus Christ. Shiny as his hair. Uh, let's do the guessing game. You don't have to guess, but... Uh, I'm from Iraq. That's, yeah, you guys heard of that place? Okay, cool, you guys bombed us, so be nice. I mean, bombing is okay. Bombing is kind of like dating. You just, you just got to get to know the people. It's I mean, that's really all we're asking for, and you guys don't really know much about us, but that's okay. I feel like the humor in these awful things is what makes people listen to those things. I, I think a lot of people, when this is a notion that humans do, they just put their hands on their ears and they choose not to listen because it's so horrible. They don't want that into their lives. And it's such a normal thing to do. I think when you use humor to bring about those things, it makes it a lot more acceptable to hear it. And not only that, but it makes it more acceptable to think about it. I don't know. My parents are older, so they're like more so, more foreign. Like, they call Capri Suns fancy juice. That's... <laughs> I go by Yasin Mazen instead of Yasin Al Haidari, uh, mostly because I really uh, it's it's an admiration for my dad. Um, I always see him speaking publicly, and he says what he wants to say. And sometimes he'll say in a setting where you're not supposed to say what you just said, but you still did it, and you did it very eloquently. So when I see that, I I want to give a little tribute to him. I spend like. 45 years of my life in Iraq and during that period I was involved in two wars the first and second Gulf War it was really hard when you don't have like power electricity power or you don't have a water in your in the pipes uh, you have to find a way I've been raised in a bookshop in a library my family they they used to have a bookshop so I used to read a lot since I was a little kid I believe uh, the main key in our life, in human being life, is the words. If you can use your words in a proper way, you will not, you will never have a problem. Oh, no, no. Yeah, look, look, I, you guys, you guys like goats? You guys fuck with goats? Oh, okay, good answer. If you guys like goats, could you like not bomb them? <laughs> it's really it's, like all 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 the Iraqis, Arabs, Afghanis, whatever. The, we're here. We just left all of our goats back there for heat signatures. You guys are launching missiles at goats, man. I just I just hope you know that. Leaving Iraq, I didn't really have to ask why we were leaving. Like, I know why. <laughs> it's because it's not safe. Kids were kidnapping from the school. Girls or boys. And I have, like, three kids. It's very hard, you know. Uh, it's very hard. I cannot imagine one of my kids if it kidnapped. I remember 2005, it was normal. You see buddies in the street. Every morning you go outside and you see, oh, there's a buddy over there. Somebody killed somebody and throw him 
there. I don't want my kids to see such things. I saw it before. I saw it in the front. So I don't want my kids, my family, to live it again. I know how hard is that. I manage it to survive. I don't want my kids to be in the same situation. We hear that uh, you are an opening and we can roll and and uh, they will help us to uh, to go to America. We stayed in Jordan for about a year and a half and then all of a sudden they're like, hey, Wednesday you guys are leaving to the United States. And uh, so from 2006, summer 2006, we got out of Iraq. February 2008, we were in the United States. Like I remember I met my sixth grade teacher. She asked me for my full name. And Iraqis have really long full names. So I immediately told her my name is Yasin Mazin Shafsuddin Abdul Amir Kadlam Hassan Kadlam Haider Ahmed Al Haidari. She was like, F you, get the fuck out of here. Like, oh, <laughs> I'm not having this bullshit in my classroom. Okay, she may as well have said, this is what she said. She's like, oh, you're one of those. I had no English. And I did the thing where I just sat around with kids and just watched them behave and act, talk, and do whatever they have to do. And I'm just observing everything. And I did that all of sixth grade, actually. And I, I don't remember saying a single word in sixth grade. Uh, not until seventh grade, I finally had built up enough uh, confidence and English in order to be like, hey, I am going to. I am going to tell you this. I went to school in Iraq and I went to school here, so now I know what it's like to have a first world and a third world bully. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. First world bullies, you guys know them. They like come around, push you, make fun of your name. Like over here, they're like, hey, what's your name? And I said, Yasin Mazin. And they're like, oh, what's that? Yasin, my balls. <laughs> I wasn't even mad. I was like, thank you, Joseph. That's... I'm going to start my career with that one. Thank you. <laughs> Third world bullies are a little bit different. They're terrorists. They like blew up my school. So this is an upgrade. Like I, I'm very happy to be here. We have the Iraqi life in, in home. You know, the food, the culture, you know. Still, we do it as the same in the back country. It's not that much different. I pray always <laughs> for them to have a good life, to have a good job and a good family. I call it a hobby, but <laughs> he wants to be a stand-up comedy, uh, and he's working on this now. I don't look Iraqi. Like I, when I tell people I'm Iraqi, they're like, what? They make those in white? That's crazy. What should they do? This is the privilege model. We just, we're just, we're just cool like that. I mean, no, it's just, and I feel like you guys don't know that we look like this just because they didn't put me on the news. You know what I mean? Like if they put, there were other white kids. If they put that on the news, I feel like that would have provoked the empathy to pull out of the war. Like if you guys saw white kids, you'd have been like, oh my god, there's people there. Someone's got to do something. It feels like okay, if I was in Iraq and I never left. I would, there's no way I would be the same person that I am today. Versus if I was born in California till today, I would not be the same person I am today. The fact that I have these two roots now that just, they're interdependent and all these tiny little moments of my life, all these little fractals are going to make me the person that I am one day. Ask me, y'all. All right, I've been Yasin Mazin. Thank you so much, guys. She tried to be nice, so she asked. She's like, oh, how many names is that? And I f***ed up, and I said, around 9-11. Okay, that, that was my first lesson. You're not supposed to say those numbers consecutively. <laughs> <laughs>